Hello, and welcome to the Business and Ethics Podcast brought to you by the Orange Catholic Foundation. My name is Rand Sperry, and I'm one of the co-hosts of this podcast. I'm in commercial real estate. We're a national real estate company, uh, brokering and also property management. And uh, uh, we're located in about 18 states with about 250 employees. And uh, I've got as my co-host, Randy Redwitz from the Redwitz firm here in Irvine a mid-sized uh, CPA firm with 140 plus employees and uh, also has some subsidiaries that, he, that he's CEO of. And we have with us our celebrity chef guest, Bruno Serrata. And Bruno was one of the recipients of the Farmers and Merchant Lifetime Achievement Award a few years back. He's certainly too young really, in my opinion, to have a Lifetime Achievement Award. But he's done so much so quickly in his life that he's already uh, uh, deserving of that award. Uh, and Bruno has had many other rewards as uh, not just for the, the quality of food that he serves in his restaurant, but as a humanitarian, receiving the humanitarian award for many things, uh, including OC Heroes here in Orange County. Uh, he was one of the top 10 heroes for CNN. I know they do that every year, I believe. And that is really, this is out of the whole United States. So, uh, and many, many other things, if you go to his website, you will see there is a list of platitudes and things that uh, Bruno has done uh, to deserve these many uh, awards. So we're really excited to have him here today as a local Orange County favorite, uh, not only for what he does for the, for the diocese, but for the community as a whole. And uh, I have been, had the pleasure of meeting Bruno about 30 years ago when I came to Orange County and, and met my wife, who, who are family friends of Bruno. And we've had many celebrations, holidays, birthdays, anniversaries uh, at his restaurant. He has fantastic food with a great presentation. And he's moved on to do a lot of things in the community. So Bruno, if you want to list a little bit of quickly, you know, how you got your restaurant, but also... Uh, also, what you're doing uh, right now, uh, I'll just start with the fact that you serve about 5,000 meals a day for the, the poorest of the poor here in Orange County uh, children. So we'll start with that. Talk a little bit about what you do for Katarina's Club, which you founded in 2005. And then we'll go into uh, the restaurant as well. Yeah, as you know, Randy, I founded Katarina's Club uh, April 18, 2005. Uh, one city, one location, one club, right? I mean, uh, that's where style. 15 years later, we are in 90 locations, 30 city, wow. with thousands of kids. Uh, you mentioned 5,000 meals a day. That was before coronavirus. Wow. Uh, before coronavirus, I was doing 5,000 children a day. We were close to have so 3 million meals so far. Because usually it takes me a 12 months time to serve 1 million meals. Uh, since coronavirus, in five months, I serve already an extra million meals. And instead to serve 5,000 a day, which is counting to 25,000 meals a week, some week we are up to 75,000 meals. Oh my goodness. So more. You're yeah. doing more. Five times more. It, uh, it's been a Overwhelming everything because to explain to you how, how uneasy it was when they shut down the restaurant and they shut down everything in Orange County, a lot of boys girls clubs start to close too. Right. I mean, uh, Katerina's club before was delivering pasta to over 90 locations, 30 cities right here in Orange County, including Long Beach, one location in San Bernardino County, one location in San Diego County. And when the coronavirus came and the governor shut down all the club, everything, the restaurant too, I had to reorganize completely everything. So we were not allowed to go to some club, we were not allowed to put the food in one container only. A lot of boys' girls' club closed the door. Mm -hmm. Which I was kind of disappointed, to be honest with you, because this is when the people needed the most. Yeah. And uh, I had to come up with some idea, what can I do to make sure we feed the kids even if it's a boys girls club or their own city closed. I mean, we start to do individual pasta container. We start to do a huge container. 
a deliver to area, go to five location Monday to Friday, when we do drive through, fill up the trunk with food. And right now it's not only pasta, sometimes I have pasta, salmon, pizza, wow. sandwiches, bread, fish. It's, it's, it's really crazy. I'm getting uh, good help for some community member. Now, what location do you do that at, Bruno, so I can be there tonight? Uh, <laughs> tonight uh, is, was Tuesday or Wednesday? What are Wednesday? <laughs> On oh, Wednesday, we are on Long on Beach Boulevard, the Boys Girls Club of Anaheim. We get usually two, three hundred cars drive through. Yesterday was the Manzanita Boys Girls Club of Anaheim. At that they usually another two hundred fifty cars. I go to different city, different location, and it's go between two hundred to five hundred cars. I did at the restaurant here uh, last month, uh, two, no, one time a week. The last one I did, I had 450 cars lined up Good. for food. We were like 12, 14 of us to do everything I had to do to fill up the trunk and the car. It was crazy. It was crazy. I never you know, felt who's, um, that. Bruno, who um, other than yourself is supporting this effort? Is Are you are you raising funds by some means or another to, to support this effort? Yeah, what I do, uh, I have a grant. We're asking for grant. People go online to our website, you know, which is katerinasclub.org. And people, because I need it, because honestly, it's five times more than before. Right. Oh, yeah. Uh, and this is only one project, because we have a different project on Katerina's Club. Uh, I was lucky enough to be on a CBS Evening News uh, two months ago with uh, Steve Hartman. In three days, I raised $120,000 to wow. CPS Evening News. But uh, anybody who want to help, uh, welcome to go online and donate it or send checks to Katerina's Club because uh, this is the time we need it the most, obviously, because uh, it's, uh, the demand is five times more than before. Well, let me times. point out, Randy, that once a year, and this is an amazing accomplishment, Bruno has KFI 640 uh, solely dedicate their entire day to raising money for Katarina's Club, starting with Bill Handel and ending with, uh, I think, Tim Conway Jr. in the evening. And I, they do their show, but after, you know, they, they interview for every seven or eight minutes, then they get uh, Bruno on and they talk about Katarina's Club and, and they take donations. How much do you raise from that now on an annual basis? Every well, year, we take five, which is you not know, the last two years, we did the Christ Cathedral because the White House started to be too small. Right. And thanks to the Christ Cathedral, we have a big parking lot and a location. Uh, we raised over $3.5 million so far. Every year, it's around half a million dollars. Mm -hmm. And uh, we raised over 100,000 pounds of pasta. Usually, the pasta is good for all year long. Uh, last month, I ran out wow. because, because of what we do. Yeah. Uh, and as you know, you go to the store, you don't find too much pastas available these days. Yeah. And uh, lucky enough, then um, I know the Barilla family, you know, the Blue Box Barilla, number one pasta company in the world. I call them, I say, I'm a big travel. I need the help. I say, I'm running out of pasta by the beginning of July. And uh, they send me 28,000 pounds for free. The day oh, okay. I do for the children, and Barilla has been one of the most humanitarian, kind uh, people, very Catholic people, extremely Catholic. They help uh, Pope Francis to the Vatican big time to feed the poor in Rome. Mm -hmm. I had a chance to meet the three brothers of Barilla, multi-billion dollar company, but uh, not the money count, is the soul and the kindness of this family. If you have a chance to meet them one day, you will realize what I'm talking about. And, uh, to send me a truck of pasta, sometimes truck of barilla sauce, which is amazing, by the way. I use that on my home. I cannot <laughs> make fresh sauce all the time. I mean, uh, just to give you an idea, you know, like by July, I really run out of pasta. Usually, I'm okay till next pasta tone with K5, which is in December. And uh, thank God for barilla, they jump over to help us. That's, that's just amazing. What, a, what an amazing um, activity level. I'm, I'm you know, people as a, as a, you know, the, I have the credibility. If you see me the video, 
if you see the interview, everything I've done, as you can see live, you can see all the children, all those family who come, like when we did the 450 car line up over here, from where I am, the White House, it was all the way down to, I think, 57 freeway with so many cars. But when you see that, you, you know what we do. I mean, you see grandma, grandpa, mom cry, thank you. They say, thank you, that's the only food I have this week. Thank you, this is the only food that I have. And this day of age is not only the children, it's the full family that they are really in need. Two weeks ago, I think uh, some Chapman football team, the student came to help me. We went to some mobile park, door to door, 160 different family delivering food. And uh, the thank you and the cry and the tears is the soul is, uh, is there. And uh, this is the reason I do what I do. I mean, I, I know that now, like I mentioned earlier, when you see some facility close down the door, when we needed the most, I was on the front line. I was yeah. on the front line with my crew. I risked my life. My crew risked their life because then we didn't know what coronavirus was. Are you catch it? You get it? You are just here. People died left and right. As an Italian, in Italy was the second country after China. Right. Then uh, I call my family every morning. You know, I have a faith, but uh, it was very scary. I mean, during the last three months ago, four months ago, when they shut us down. And I see all those people shut down the door when the children finally needed the most. Right. We jump so much more. And that's why we arrived to do one million meals in four months' time. Amazing. Bruno, if, if we, th th this is such a fascinating story, but we want to cover a couple other areas too. But what, what's the status on, on your restaurant and, um, and your personnel and, and how? Um, it's severe impact to the restaurant business for sure, but how are you coping with it? Okay, remember, Andy, the, three years ago I lost the restaurant on fire. Right, in the fire. I, I just reopened a year and a half ago. I mean, uh, I still have bills to pay, you know, you know what it is, reconstruction, sure. and if you're a construction business, uh, you know what I mean. They ask you one million, it costs you three million, but anyway. <laughs> uh, we all know that, right? You know, you're familiar with stuff like that, right? Yeah. But in a, I reopened it just right when we were start to coming out a little bit, you know, because I have to refinance my home again, refinance the restaurant. Here we coming out and again, and they shut us down. Yeah. That was a total panic because I said, okay, well, that is over. But I'm a guy who never give up. I say, let's wait, let's wait. And uh, you know the PPP that the government gave us. Right. Honestly, that I said, like, if we have to use it the first uh, 24 weeks, uh, it's going to be for nothing. I have no making income. Why to hire people when I'm close? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Hallelujah! They they prolong it. They yes. I have the time to reopen and right. to do some business, and I could use the PPP loan, and that was a help. If I did not have the PPP loan the PPP loan to pay my mortgage and my crew, I don't know if I was still talking to you right now. Yeah. Because it would have been a horrible situation. Now the PPP money is almost down. Obviously, I just had to talk to my bookkeeper. I think it's almost over. And uh, the crew, during the first few months, as you all know, they were making more money staying home. Right, right. I mean, uh, some of the crew did not want to come back to work if yeah. I want to be opening. Yeah. Finally, they reopened the door. And I mean, I say, okay, now we have opened the door. I did a lot of work in the restaurant. I put a UV light on every UC unit, UV light on how much silverware, plastic glass between table, UV light in the dining room, the bathroom after I closed down. Wow. To wow. have a completely 99.9% .9 clean for the virus. Oh my goodness. Spent a lot of money to do this. And three weeks later, they shut us down and again. Oh, yes. And, and believe me, I spent a lot of money for this UV light because and I, I'm lucky to have 12 private rooms. That means very safety. So if you come with your family, six, seven, eight people, each of you will have your own private room. is even more safe. You won't be close yeah. to each other. Sure. Keep the CDC guidelines six feet apart in the dining room. But when they shut us down, there was another panic. 
But what I did, I put all my table, because they say you can do outside dining. Yes. I take all my dining room table, put in my garden. And oh. that is another hallelujah, because I have a beautiful, gorgeous garden. Yes. Because I have a big property. And I was able to put over 25 tables outside of the garden with a stunning setup. And uh, lucky enough, we are in California. The weather is nice in the summertime. Right. And I try to deal with this till when the winter or the fall come, and hopefully they can last reopen the door inside again. But it was a, not an easy task, uh, but I went through economic recession, 9-11, loss of the convention, all the hotel is empty, went through the fire, went through the <laughs> coronavirus. <laughs> I got to go through this one too, nothing mm -hmm. else I can do, right? It's called a roller coaster. Somebody. A roller coaster yes, of life. Uh, I tell you something, when CBS, uh, Steve Hartman interviewed me, he said, Bruno, I interviewed you during the recession, you feel in more kids than, than ever. I'm interviewed now during the coronavirus, you feel in five times kids more than that. What would be my third interview? I said, my third interview, I would be on the top of the Statue of Liberty with a plate of pasta and American <laughs> flag, and that would be my third interview, I said. No more tragedy. <laughs> oh, goodness. So I, I understand you have 25 tables outside and uh, it's such a lovely garden out there. It, it's, it's almost a, 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 a nice alternative, especially during the summer. Have you been able to get your, uh, your employees back because the, the, uh, the federal guidelines just expired last week and they're already talking about extending them and depending who you talk to, the Democrats or the Republicans, it could go on for another six months or maybe an eternity, <laughs> who knows, which, um, so is, is that been a challenge or have people come back and have you bumped into any other ethical challenges uh, during the operation of, of the restaurant? Well, regarding the crew, since I reopened uh, the garden outside, um, beginning of the week is still slow. We can have been decent because people love the atmosphere, I mean, um, people say I have probably the most beautiful outdoor dining in South California because I'm lucky to have a, such a huge property, mm -hmm. a huge garden. And uh, some crew, they don't want to come back. I have uh, three, four, five of my waiter captain who decide not. And uh, I understand it's like, you know, obviously, like I mentioned earlier, when you get so much amount of money, Stay home, um, yeah. why you want to go to work? Yeah, mm -hmm. I will work on my life. I mean, some, but some come back. I mean, uh, I have a loyalty on my crew. I have loyalty of people who work for me. That's what uh, represented me. And uh, I have a good amount of back and I feel confident I can deal with. Uh, I talked to Lata Chef and Restaurateur. They find also the same problem. Some of their crew, they don't want to come back. Obviously, if they start to give another $600 a week extra on unemployment, like rumor around, I have to see what's going to happen. Because if you count the 600, the 400 is a thousand a week, 4,000 a month. If you give $1,200 stimulus package, you get to almost $5,500 a month. Yeah. You don't make $5,500 tips a month. Right, right. And, uh, that could be damaging to work. Yeah. Dan, you kind of said to the employees, look, I understand that's a great package the federal government's giving you, but understand if you don't come back, I don't want you back. I mean, have you crossed that line with them? Or are you saying, I have the money and call me when you're done? <laughs> uh, you know me well enough, Randy. I'm, I'm, I have faith. I, I, I respect people and uh, I forgive them because I understand. I, I, I understand, and uh, how can you say not come to work instead to make $6,000, stay home and go to the beach? <laughs> yeah. I mean, honestly, it's a pro and con, and uh, I love my crew. I mean, my crew is my family. Uh, I respect all of them. And uh, obviously, the one who's telling me, please, Bruno, keep me on an employee. Please, Bruno, keep me. I mean, they beg me to stay home. What can you say? You yeah, don't stay home. Well, uh, you let them, you say. Okay, but make sure you be ready as soon when the things is over, which I hope then uh, it won't be for a lifetime because we all be broke anyway. Well, I've been there many times. And in fact, 
had some business events there. And I could tell you that it does seem like the staff loves working there and loves working for you. So I can- Yeah, it's a good relationship. I uh, do the etiquette that we have between each other, the kitchen crew. I mean, look, my chef worked for me 30 years, my GM wow. 30 years, bartender. An average of 20 to 30 years they've been working for me. Amazing. Uh, Right. You don't see that in the rest of business. No. Right. And, uh, they, told, they came back after the fire. I was closed for a year and a half. I found a job for all of them the first two months after the fire. As soon as I opened the door, they all came back. That's the same thing right now. I mean, uh, they came back after the fire and now I say, okay, I forgive you if you stay home an extra three months with your full unemployment package because I understand, you know. What would you do, Randy? Would you stay home too with a full package like this? I mean, think about, you know. Well, yeah. especially if I'm making more than I could make in the restaurant, I owe it to my family to bring in as much money as I can, I, I guess. And, um, but it, it's not good for the soul, no, frankly. To sit yeah. home and collect money that's really not yours, that's the problem I have with it personally. So uh, I'd rather be out earning my money as opposed to someone giving it to me. But if, uh, the one who stay, the one who work, uh, obviously, they're not favorite one. They are the one who work you to make what they made it. And, uh, it's really, it's, it's, uh, we all know it's not uh, something that happens every day or what's happened in this is the situation. You know? And I mean, I have to redo everything. I have to limit my menu also because of coronavirus, uh, limited the seating, uh, six feet apart, like, as I mentioned. Everything has changed completely, not only on Katerina's Club, feeding millions of children and family now, but even in my business, I had to change 360 degrees completely the way we were operating before. I mean, now the desk is outside of the gate. You know, wow. We check the temperature of customer. Uh, we let them wear masks until when they sit at the table. I have a telephone outside. I mean, you barely have somebody inside of the restaurant. Everything is operating outside of the garden. Who never thought something like that four months ago, you know, like... Wow. Uh, but the one good thing is that the people feel like that in Italy where they come. Yeah. You know, yes. music on the back. I say, I hope... What about your that, I hope that this has changed the mentality of people. In Italy, you eat outside in the summertime. Sure. You eat inside. Yeah. I always thought it was strange in California, Nice weather all year long, then not too many people want to eat outside. I mean, this change it could be part of it in the future, more activity, feel like we are in Europe. And in my garden, with the background of music, Andrea Bocelli, Pavarotti, mm. it's like uh, you are in Italy, you know, and it's not that bad things. Cheaper you, to take a flight. You made us, you made us hungry. We're, yeah. we're coming quickly. Yeah, I'm open for business. You can make reservation. Let me see you make reservation. Okay. <laughs> oh, that's great. Great. You know, I was going to say it's, it's such an interesting contradiction. The PPP money on the one hand is all intended to retain employees. And then the unemployment benefits, you know, incentivize people to stay home. <laughs> so you really got a, a very serious conflict of, of interests there with, it, with, with regard to that. It's, um, there's no reconciliation there. No, it was a challenge to think uh, and to listen every day, what can we do and what can we not do and how yeah. we can do. I mean, it's, I'm a chef, I'm a restaurateur. So what, what, what? I mean, right. it, it, drove, it drove us everybody crazy to try to understand first how we have to do, no, we cannot do this, yes, you cannot do that. It's, uh, it was a challenge. Now we kind of learn a little bit about it. Uh, but uh, no employee will want to be on the payroll because they were making more money to no. stay home, obviously, like we mentioned. Bruno, what do, you, what do you see of the restaurant industry for the future, other than maybe more people moving outside? Yeah, <laughs> which, it, it sounds which a great, which is a great thought, and I agree with you, I've seen it. You know. But what, see... do you, what, do you, what do you see of the restaurant industry going forward? Right now, it's not the good news. I have a lot of peer, and uh, we talk to each other. I read the news. I'm lucky I have a garden outside. But if you have a restaurant, you have nothing, or you're on the street, right. those people will not survive. 
Yeah. I mean, those people work for a lifetime, very hard. They have a small, tiny restaurant. They use this small, tiny restaurant with 20 tables inside, yeah. cramped next to each other. They do yeah. better than a restaurant like mine that is big, blah, 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 right? Those restaurants, if they cannot have city outside, they will not survive. Uh, big chain, if I lose 100, big chain lose 1 million. Yeah. You see a loss in our industry, which is terrifying. Uh, just to let you know, uh, my minister, uh, prime minister, no, not the prime minister of Italy, but uh, a big politician in Italy, say on national TV, I'm recommending you chef restaurateur to find another job. Oh, wow. I mean, oh my gosh. To hear that. Wow. Most of what I thought was horrible for that person to say that uh, because this restaurateur works 16 hours a day, seven days a week. We always did. But to see the future of it is horrifying. And uh, as you know, my restaurant is in Anaheim, nine hotel, convention, everything. Two days ago, I drove on Arabo Boulevard. I had almost tear on my eyes. Everything's empty. Nobody at Disney, nobody at hotel empty. No convention to town. Some of my friends were supposed to open those new three, four hotel in March. They closed down. I can't even imagine how much they lose every day. My heart will go to them because it's Terrified, they're losing millions of dollars. The, the small restaurateur losing thousands of dollars, and some of them will close down, and some of them are really closing down the door forever. Uh, yesterday, I uh, read a cut and custard cup in a. Uh, oh, yeah, one yeah. of my in law's favorites. Yeah, that, <laughs> other that, than you, Bruno. That was a, yeah, that was an institution in Orange County, closed the door. Oh. Uh, cash. In uh, Anaheim, close the door. Patina has in LA, close the door. Every day you hear they close the door, they close the door, they close. If we throw a hundred years, close the door. This is what you hear every day. I mean, in my things, I keep looking at myself it's like, oh God, please, that's in my life, yeah. all my life, that's what I've been doing. And uh, I have the garden, so I don't do 200 people a night, but I do decent weekend and I hope I can survive till things get better, but right. uh, I just always have hope and faith that they can get better, but it's not good out there for the rest of the industry. It's very bad. Wow. Yeah, I, you know, I noticed in the city of Orange, uh, they've closed down in the circle, the street so that the uh, restaurateurs can use now the street. Great idea to do that, honestly. Ah, you should have done that forever, not yeah. only now. Yeah. And don't let any car drive close completely that we don't have the dust or the smoke of the car. And that's what we do in Italy. You close street and they're full of a restaurant, you know, you walk. And uh, when I saw that in Orange, I said, that is a phenomenal idea to do that. Yeah. But you also have a lot of car go around on a circle and the smoke when you eat and everything. I don't think it's that pleasant, but at least for those restaurateurs, they can survive. Yeah, yeah, we have, um, I would say about two, over 200 restaurants, maybe 300 in the shopping centers that we own. Mm -hmm. And um, it, it's a bloodbath. We're very worried about who's gonna survive when this is over. As you know, the Cheesecake Factory has filed bankruptcy and everyone thinks they're one of the giants. How could that happen? very easily. I mean, when you look at the overhead to, to keep a restaurant open with no revenue right. or uh, just keep it closed with no revenue. Yeah, exactly what I say. If I lose 100, they lose 1 million because they're yeah. a huge company. Right. And they're not the first and they're not the only one. And uh, it doesn't look that uh, great out there. And uh, it's going to be tough for a lot of us. Yeah, but it, it'll come back as the, vac as the vaccine comes into play, I think that it'll come back maybe in a different way, as you, you mentioned, different types of, of layouts and, and eating outside, the music. Maybe we will become more of a European type of dining experience uh, throughout certainly California because we've got the weather. I think it would so. be beautiful because I always say that uh, from the beginning you came to California, so why people eat inside, they don't eat outside. Right. And I feel like that there would be a challenge to change it, but if you do it the right way, it's going to be beautiful for everybody. 
And uh, like I mentioned, I'm lucky I have the balcony, the veranda, 25 table outside. I mean, uh, I, do, I could do almost the same amount I do inside. Mm -hmm. I don't do a mini stir because we have to keep the six feet uh, distance from table. But uh, if I can do decent, uh, I just needed to improve my Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday night to do a good week. That is uh, the tough one that I, I, because we don't do the number without convention, without hotel, I cannot do great beginning of the week, you know. No. Yeah. Well, Bruno, we're going to have to uh, sign off here in a moment. We're just about at 30 minutes. And I think I'm going to end with a little commercial because you uh, certainly deserve it for all you do for the community. So yeah. Bruno yeah. owns the Anaheim White House, which if you Google it, make sure you put Anaheim with White House. Otherwise, you get a whole different website. <laughs> and, uh, and make sure that uh, uh, you, you support him and what he's doing both for Katarina's Club. And I'm excited just listening to the ambience of, of being outside and dining outside. I, Rosemary and I are going to pay you a visit real soon to enjoy a nice evening at the Anaheim uh, White House restaurant, home of many celebrities who have been there. The President uh, Carter, I believe, has been there, President Bush, um, Gwen Stefani, who's a local, and uh, uh, many of the hockey, uh, professional hockey players and baseball players have visited your restaurant, and I'm sure, uh, and, and I've heard Rand Sperry's been there, another big celebrity in Orange County. Uh, up on the list, <laughs> Rand Sperry up on the list. Uh, <laughs> and I always uh, thought it so fun, and, and I, I think you did save a lot of the pictures of, of many of the famous people that have been in your restaurant. As I go to the restroom, you'd have them out on the wall there. And uh, and I believe those have, those survived the fire, as I recall. No, they did not. Uh, okay. Okay. If uh, one knew one, and obviously it has to be Sophia Lauren. Ah, okay. Oh Sophia Lauren is she the one who called me the day of the fire, when the last one on fire. Oh my she goodness. in an afternoon, and I said, she deserved it for me to get another piece of her and put on the wall. <laughs> oh. Well, I'll send you. I'll send you a new picture of me, and I'll sign it. Thank you, Randy. thank you. They're very kind and very, very nice of you. I really. <laughs> well, thank you very much for being here with us today. We really appreciate it, uh, Bruno, and we wish you so much success now and in the future. Absolutely, we'll be there too. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Bye, bye.